Happening now, stomach-churning testimony continues in the rape trial against a Chautauqua County man accused of sexually assaulting children. And today, our county honors Vietnam veterans with a special welcome home ceremony. Plus, how you can help document history in Jamestown, one placard at a time. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Those stories and more are coming up. But first, an 11-year-old victim of a Chautauqua County man accused of sexually assaulting and raping children delivered stomach-churning testimony to a jury yesterday. We warn you, the accounts in this story are graphic in nature. Prosecutors with the Chautauqua County District Attorney's Office called uh, one of Dustin Post's alleged victims to the stand during the first day of the criminal trial against him in Chautauqua County Court. Wearing a Lilo and Stitch t-shirt, the young victim recalled her alleged interaction with Post while at a Silver Creek birthday party in 2018 for his twin sisters, who also alleged sexual abuse. Before joining others at that party, Post allegedly took the then six-year-old up to his bedroom, blindfolded her for a game where he sexually abused the child. Prior to the party downstairs, Post testified, she testified that Post showed her a video of him captured doing the sexual act. Once the party concluded, Post took the girl home only after making a stop at a local hiking trail where he once again allegedly sexually assaulted the girl. Now, a year later, images of the alleged abuse were discovered on the child's phone and turned over to New York State Police for investigation, ultimately leading to Post's arrest. In addition to the 11-year-old, Post is also accused of sexually assaulting several other young victims, including a baby between the ages of 1 and 2 years old, which prosecutors are expected to outline as that trial continues. Well, Chautauqua County has received over $900,000 as part of a settlement with a national opioid litigation lawsuit. This week, the Chautauqua County Legislature accepted the county's share of a settlement with Teva Pharmaceutical Industries. Over the course of 13 years, the county will receive $957,000. The funding is part of a larger $523 million settlement secured by New York's Attorney General back in November. However, New York State and some counties were already in the process of suing uh, TVA and actually received a, a verdict in that case. <coughs> so New York State felt that they should have something above and beyond what the settlement was already uh, proposed to provide for. Chautauqua County already received $2.5 million from an opioid settlement fund from New York's Attorney General. That was back in November of 2021. Well, after a month's debate, a program to help improve senior citizen housing in Jamestown may finally be funded in its entirety. Presenting to the City Council's Finance Committee, Assessor Lisa Velope says there were 303 applications for the program, with 257 being eligible. In total, to cover all requests, almost $1.878 million would be needed here. Currently, the City Council only has approved $1.5 million, with the assumption it would have been completely funded. With monies that have been already coming back from other projects, finance care Chair Kim Eklund decided that the $282,000 would be needed to completely fund this initiative. In the end, the finance chair tells us she'd like to see a clean consensus of numbers here. I think all of us on council have no problem funding the program. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of making sure we have the right mm -hmm. numbers because I don't want to be back here in a month mm -hmm. saying we shortchanged it again. Yeah. And or number two, making sure that what we're going to give you is what is fully needed so right. i guess my concern is when i'm looking at this and i'm confused and i'm a numbers person while other city leaders would like to take funds from existing programs eklund believes that to fairly cover everyone using arpa monies is the best path forward for the council's january voting session a resolution designating almost three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars in arpa monies has been added for the purpose of finally funding the popular program. 
Well, today, the Chautauqua County community, they're honoring Vietnam War veterans as part of a special ceremony in Mayville. Our Bronson Rasmussen has more on the meaning behind this welcome home these heroes never really received. Justin, we're here in Mayville today with County Executive P.J. Wendell, and today really marks quite the anniversary. What can you tell us about it? Uh, it was brought to my attention uh, by... Um, Legislator Terry Niebel uh, of the 50th anniversary of the Paris Peace Accords. Uh, and we came together and realized that uh, an event like this would be somewhat fitting. Uh, you know, it's been uh, 50 years since many of these men or women uh, were honored in any way. When they came back, it was often, you know, under protest or quietly or without any fanfare. So I feel it's uh, fitting and honorable to do it, uh, you know, today. Unfortunately, Chautauqua County weather, we have our winter snow, of course, this week. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, uh, what these men endured for our country uh, goes without saying. And it's uh, this time for us to, uh, you know, recognize their what they've done for us and uh, give them the fitting tribute to do sir. Well, based off of the crowd behind us, it seems like quite the turnout, quite the support for this. We're excited. Uh, you know, this could be something we decide to do every year, but I think it's more importantly the 50th anniversary, making sure we recognize, uh, you know, the men and women that did sacrifice. It honor, uh, surprisingly, I learned over the years that um, there were 12 females that died in the Vietnam War. Uh, so it was very interesting that, uh, you know, it came from, uh, you know, both men and women served and lost their lives for this country. So it's time to recognize them and, and uh, you know, give them some recognition. All right. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say to those at home that might be watching? No, I just, you know, this is a great event. It's, it's for us to come together and recognize, uh, you know, our veterans. Uh, they're getting older. Uh, you know, as I was reminded, uh, my own father's here today and he's 74. So uh, they're not getting any younger. And, you know, much like our Vietnam, our, uh, World War II veterans are, are we're losing day by day. And our, Viet our Korean veterans will do the same. These gentlemen, uh, you know, will succumb to that uh, fate, if you will. Uh, so, you know, we just like to recognize them uh, before they leave us. I very much understand. My father served in Vietnam as well, and it really surprised me that 50 years, quite a long time, but to him it's really probably yesterday. wasn't that long yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Right. I talk to my dad often. It's, it was just yesterday they did this, so right. interesting. Well, reporting in Mayville, Bronson Rasson, WNY News Now. Bronson, thank you. It's so incredible for those men and women and what they've done. So what a great opportunity to highlight them, unfortunately, all these many years later. Well, the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, the team who cared for Buffalo Bill Safety, Damar Hamlin, they got a very special honor on Thursday. Physicians, nurses, and other support staff were there when Cincinnati mayor handed them the key to the city. The mayor says that the incident couldn't have happened at a better place and that the healthcare professionals at UC represent the absolute best in their field. UC Medical Center is Cincinnati's only verified level one trauma center. The 24-year-old football safety went into cardiac arrest and collapsed during a game against the Cincinnati Bengals back on January 2nd. Quick action by the team at that medical center, as well as the top cardiac specialist at the university hospital, made all the difference in saving his life. We all now know how special our trauma center is, how extraordinary the professionals who work here are. Yeah, they certainly are. Hamlin still faces a lengthy recovery, but we're hearing he is making some remarkable progress. Well, now let's switch gears and get a first check of our weather forecast. Chief forecaster Andrew Stevenson joining us with that today. And uh, Andrew, at least for now, it seems like here in the southern tier, the snow has stopped falling. But I know this morning, north Chautauqua County into Buffalo, it was a pretty yucky start to the day yet again. And yeah, the lake effect snow band that was down here yesterday moved up across the Buffalo area yesterday, or overnight, I should say, and it's still there this morning. Right now, out in Erie at the Mill Creek Mall, we have clear, or we have cloudy skies, but at least the roads are clear out there right now, although they are a little wet out there. Here is first defense Doppler radar. That lake effect snow band that was across the southern tier yesterday moved up north overnight, and 
it sat across Buffalo through this morning, but that lake effect snow band is starting to taper off through the rest of the afternoon out there. The high yesterday was 33 degrees, the low was 25. The records for the day, record high 61 set back in 1944, and a record low of negative 12 set back in 1927. So for the rest of the afternoon out there, mostly cloudy skies, a couple flurries out there. We might even see a couple peaks of sunshine. I saw a couple peaks of sunshine this morning. Temperatures today will range from the upper 20s to lower 30s. And I'll have a look at the snowfall totals from the past 24 hours coming up in the full forecast as well as if the cold air is going to go away anytime soon. Yeah, certainly a lot of people looking for that springtime warmth. I know we're pretty far off from that, Andrew. Thank you. As we continue, we're explaining how a new bill would impact the sub-minimum wage workers receive here in New York. And later, well, the FDA, they've decided not to regulate CBD. Stay with us. WNY News Now. We'll be right back. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. Looking for a fair and honest auto mechanic? Look no further than DeWyas Auto Service. Located at 140 Main Street in Randolph, our family-owned business is ready for all of your automotive needs. From general service to more complex repairs, count on DeWyas Auto to keep you on the road. We not only keep your cars running smoothly, but also looking great with our expert detailing crew. Send us a message on Facebook or call us today at 716-358-2292 to set up an appointment. DeWyas Auto Service. Fair, honest, and the best prices guaranteed. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Some New York state lawmakers are looking to reintroduce a bill this session that would phase out the sub-minimum wage for tipped workers. Today, our New York Capital correspondent Elise Klein talks to lawmakers and advocates about the impact this legislation could have. While serving lunch to restaurant workers who travel to the state capitol from New York City, lawmakers announced reintroducing a bill that would phase out sub-minimum wages for tipped workers. Restaurant workers in New York State currently earn 66 percent of the minimum wage before tips, and some lawmakers say that needs to change. But we can't leave our tip workers behind. We can't leave our restaurant workers behind. The bill would initiate a grant program for restaurants to afford raising wages for workers. It would also allow for tips to be shared between workers in the front and the back of the house at restaurants, which is currently illegal. Jennifer Almanzar, an advocate and former bartender and server, says phasing out sub-minimum wages would give tip workers a living wage. And a living wage is to guarantee them a salary. I have come out of restaurants with $20. I've made $5 an hour. What is that? You know, I'm coming home with like $7 an hour. So this, we really need to end the sub-minimum wage. And while advocates feel this legislation would give them wages, they feel they need to survive. Some restaurant associations feel the opposite. It's making an assumption that the tipped employees are low paid, when in fact tipped employees are some of the highest paid employees in the restaurant industry. The New York State Department of Labor requires employers outside of New York City to pay food service employees an hourly cash wage of $8.80, plus a tip credit of $4.40. If a tipped worker makes below the minimum wage, the restaurant or business is required to make it up under state labor law. In Albany, Elise Klein, WNY News Now. Elise, thank you. From New York's capital to Pennsylvania, where gridlock in the House continued this week with Democrats and Republicans there unable to agree on a basic rules that are necessary for that chamber to function. 
The House is also at odds over a bill that recently passed in the Senate. The bill includes three constitutional amendments pertaining to voter ID, regulatory override, and a two-year window for victims of child sex abuse to file civil lawsuits against their abuser. House Speaker Mark Rossi previously said the House would consider no other business until a two-year civil window is passed. Republicans say passing the Senate bill is the best and quickest option here. Democrats, including Rossi, say Republicans are using survivors as, quote, pawns to pass the other two amendments included in the bill. Rossi assembled a bipartisan work group with the goal of bringing the, bridging the divide, and he doesn't plan on presiding over the House until they're successful. It is my hope at the conclusion of this tour, we will have a clear idea on how best to heal the divisiveness in Harrisburg. On Tuesday, Rossi gobbled the House out of session until February 27th. He said he would call the House to order sooner if both sides can agree on rules and passing the two-year civil window by itself. Well, the Food and Drug Administration says there are too many unknowns about CBD products to regulate them as foods or supplements under the agency's current structure and now called on Congress to create new rules for the massive and growing market. The marijuana-derived product has become increasingly popular in lotions and foods where their legal status has been murky here in the U.S., there's not enough evidence about CBD to confirm that it's safe for use in foods or as a dietary supplement. New rules, if any, could include clearer labels, regulations, and limits on CBD levels and other aspects of purchasing, like a minimum age to do so. Needed for CBD products, FDA analysts say Congress here, they're going to need to act. And there's a lot of questions swirling around Washington, D.C. right now, and lawmakers, they want some answers. Senate Intelligent Committee says that uh, they have not been given access to the classified information discovered in the possession of President Joe Biden or former President Donald Trump. Other lawmakers say they're going to take action against the White House. The National Archives is also considering sending letters to former U.S. presidents about these classified docs and vice presidents including those like Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, just to make sure they don't have these documents with them. That's according to sources familiar with the matter. In the end, officials say it's vitally important to make sure that documents don't end up in the wrong hands. At this hour in Memphis, Tennessee, they're on edge, and many other across the nation are as well, as they prepare to release the body camera footage and sky camera video tonight showing what's expected to be a disturbing attack on Tyree Nichols being brutally beaten by five now former Memphis police officers. Gloria Pasmino tells us more. We got one male black running. You know, the Scorpion car pull over to East Ranger Ross. We have one running on foot. Do me battle, Kate. He's fighting at this time. It's not the videos people are demanding to see. But this police scanner audio is a small glimpse into what happened between Memphis police officers and Tyree Nichols on January 7th, after he was pulled over for reckless driving. Police say a confrontation occurred and pepper spray was used. Then Nichols fled on foot. There was another altercation uh, at a nearby location at which the, the, the serious injuries uh, were experienced by Mr. Nichols. After some period of time of um, waiting around afterwards, he was taken away by an ambulance. Nichols died in the hospital three days later after his encounter with police. Five former officers have each been charged with second degree murder, aggravated assault, aggravated kidnapping, official misconduct, and official oppression. Nichols' mother says she hopes protests are peaceful after the video is released. I didn't see it, but from what I hear, it's going to be horrific. But I want each and every one of you to protest in peace. In Memphis, I'm Gloria Pasmino. Gloria, thank you. Coming up, our Pet of the Week segment, where we introduce you to Bunny, 
the cat. And later, the Jamestown, a group of Jamestown historians, they're on the prowl for some historical markers how you can get involved. But first, when we return, Andrew has more details about your first offense weather forecast. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone. If you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. Fast, accurate, and every day, first events weather. Welcome back to WNY News Now. Currently in downtown Jamestown, we're under cloudy skies. The current temperature 25 degrees at the Jamestown Airport with a south wind of 14 miles per hour, and that makes it feel like 13 degrees out there. Snowfall reports from the past 24 hours from across the region. Northeast Pennsylvania has a report of 9.5 inches, Mayville at 7.2, Cataraugus at 5.5 inches, Fredonia 4.3, and here in Jamestown at the Jamestown Airport, report of 1.3 inches of snow. Here's what's happening across the northeast right now just a few leftover lake effect snow showers across western new york our next system will arrive overnight tonight it's a minor clipper system that will bring a few light snow showers into the region so let's time it out on future scan future scan shows that lake effect snow band coming to an end across buffalo through the afternoon that's going to lead us with mostly cloudy skies for the rest of the afternoon and then as we head into night a clipper system will move across to the north of the area tonight that's going to bring some light snow showers back across the region overnight tonight and into it early tomorrow. We're not really expecting anything out of that, maybe an inch or less of snow uh, out of that. And then as we head into the rest of tomorrow afternoon, mostly cloudy skies. Again, a couple peaks of sunshine possible to tomorrow afternoon. And then as we head into Sunday, another system is going to cross the region and it's going to bring some rain and snow showers across the area on Sunday. Speaking of temperatures, if you're a fan of the chilly air, well, it looks like the chillier air is going to last at least through the first week of February where the NOAA 6 to 10 day temperature outlook favors below average temperatures across much of the region and you'll see those below average temperatures on the seven day forecast on tomorrow uh, yeah tomorrow will be in the lower 30s we should warm up into the upper 30s close to 40 on sunday 32 on monday and you see those colder temperatures as we head into next week as temperatures will drop into the 20s for daytime highs and overnight lows in the teens as we'll keep a chance of snow showers in the forecast for much of next week justin oh, i'm not ready for that uh, bone chilling air <laughs> Andrew nevertheless thank you for the forecast well in an effort to help our furry friends find a forever home we're partnered with the Chautauqua County Humane Society for our pet of the week segment Brian Papalea has more about this week's featured furry friend hi Justin I am here in the senior cat colony with bunny bunny is an awesome little love bug that's been hanging out with us for a little while and we are trying to get him a home and he just wants to, he loves to rub his head against your face. That's the one that he likes to be as close to you as possible. He probably would like a quieter home, somewhere where he can kind of chill out. He is six and a half years old. 
Um, if you do try, you can talk to our adoption counselors if you do have cats and they'll tell you the proper slow introductions that might make that work. But we really urge people to come down and meet Bunny, fall in love with Bunny and get him a home. Yeah. You can find out, look, see, he loves everybody. Look at that. So yeah, we encourage you, we'll be open today until 5.30, from 1 to 5.30. Tomorrow from 11 to 3. So stop in, meet Bunny, fall in love, and take this little dude home. Thank you, Justin. All right, thank you, Brian. He is a snuggle bug for sure. If you want to learn more about Bunny or any other residents at the shelter, you can check him out online at chqhumane.org. Well, coming up next, the City of Jamestown history is presented for the 79th year the placement of a new marker, how you can make an impact, a suggestion for this year and next year's big 80. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Have you ever wanted to live out your dreams? Hunt, fish, in all corners of the earth? Well, now's your chance. Follow Primitive Patriot Outdoors as we live out our dreams and show you how to live out yours through outdoor adventures. From Western New York to Africa to all corners of the earth, follow us on this adventure. It's an experience you've never seen before. Lead and Lures, Roku TV, Channel 716. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Well, do you want to be part of history? Jamestown historians, they're asking for your help to identify where future historical markers should be placed. Kelly Ackerman shares the story. Jamestown Historical Marker Committee and City of Jamestown historian Ashley Senske are taking suggestions for the next marker location. So far, Senske has compiled a list and is comparing each submission to current markers. The only requirement is that the historical submission must be something or someone that has made a huge cultural or social impact on Jamestown. I am a little biased, but you know I can't not talk about Lucille Ball, right? And it's not just because she did I Love Lucy. She was the first woman to be a president of a major production studio. That's huge. And she's the reason why we have Star Trek. And she came from here, you know, and she constantly wanted to come back here and help, you know, this area. For the city's historian, the goal is to never forget chronicles of the past. We hear something nowadays and we're like, I never learned that in school. Well, it's because somebody along the line stopped talking about it and no longer thought it was important. When in reality, I would say most of it's important. As of today, Senski is still taking suggestions via email at senski at jamestowny.gov. She is looking for something truly unique for this year, but especially for the city's 80th historical marker, which will be dedicated in 2024. She would like to place more than one sign per year, would need additional funding. Maybe I should start a GoFundMe that's just dedicated to the historical marker fund so that in case we ever raise enough money to do a second one, you yeah. know, we could do more than one year. Yeah, that's a so unfortunately, no, I don't have any way for Sony to donate, but if they are willing, please reach out. <laughs> <laughs> Always happy to talk. Kelly Ackerman, WNY News Now. Kelly, thank you so much for that. And uh, when you think about Jamestown, I think history is one of the first things that come to mind, right? You look at this weekend. Doors open Jamestown happening Saturday, and a good majority of the venues are of those of a historical stature, trying to document something. And, and it is so important because if you let history go to the wayside, you'll forget about it. And in many cases, you might be doomed to repeat it. So certainly a great one there. 
Well, that's going to do it for WNY News Now this week. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com and in our free mobile app. You can uh, download it in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. We'll leave you with this live look over Lakeside Park in Mayville. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here Monday for WNY News.